What's up? Welcome to the Worst Team Training Weekly Show. We're so glad to have you. Welcome back, and we are here live again with Alex Avia. So glad that you guys are here to join us. Uh, we tried this yesterday, of course, but we had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties that prevented us. But man, we are so glad that you're here. Thanks for coming in. We invite all you guys, Periscope, Facebook Live. If you guys would, go ahead and swipe and invite. Let everybody know what is up and share out this broadcast because, man, it is going to be one great show with this man right here, Alex Avila, who's sitting in the hot seat. So we're about to get to him in just a second. And uh, we thank you guys for coming on board, letting us know what's going on in your world and in your church. We ask that you would go ahead and hit the uh, swipe and invite button if you want by Periscope, Facebook Live. Also, our audio playback listeners, thanks so much for joining us. iTunes, iHeart, Spreaker, and Alexa using your Alexa skills. Are you doing that? How are they coming along? Thanks so much for bringing us up. Good to see you. My name is Brandon Dempsey, and I'm a follower of Jesus and also CEO and training director for worshipteamtraining.com. Now, we come to you every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central, and we do these shows based on for worship leaders, musicians, singers, pastors, worship leaders, audio tech, media, and we have conversations like this, like with Alex, others, and you can find out more at what we do at worshipteamtraining.com. We provide workshops that come straight to you for your worship team. A weekend workshop, a Friday and Saturday, that takes place at your church, developing and equipping your team on your own private grounds, if you will. And then also we have a fantastic mentoring program, which we walk with you, one-to-one -one mentoring, staff like myself, Tony Guerrero, Tim Timmons, the list goes on. Find us at worshipteentraining.com. And lastly, you want to check out WTTU. This is our university program in which we have great articles like Alex. We have fantastic webinars today with John Chisholm and Susan Fontaine Godwin talking about getting your songs published. So if you're a worship leader or a songwriter, you don't want to miss it. And if you sign up for our membership today, you get the webinar for free. In fact, you get free webinars every month. You get book downloads every month and special training Thursdays, like tomorrow. We're going to have Garrett Goodwin. Garrett is a drummer from uh, Carrie Underwood and tours with her regularly. So he's going to be speaking about his drumming technique and approach to worship and how to engage others in the church and worship with solid drumming, like what Alex is going to talk with us today about. As well as this coming Friday, you don't want to miss Jenny Owens. She is coming on the program to talk about her brand new album and release, and we have free giveaways. So if you want to win a free album download and songs by Jenny Owens, you want to tune in right here on this channel on Facebook and Periscope Live at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time this Friday. Again, that's 12 p.m. this Friday. So what is up? We're so grateful to have Alex right here. Alex and I have known each other now for like the past maybe year and a half or something. And what's been awesome is that he's been following our broadcast and watching our early Periscope shows from, you know, back a year and a half ago, like what I just said. But we've been interacting since then, talking about drumming, talking about worship leading. He's got such a great heart. Uh, he is uh, living in SoCal. He drums out there at Mosaic at Panoma. Uh, right now, he's in Thailand, where it's about 12 o'clock at midnight, doing this for us. So praise be to God for that. He also serves at Thailand Encounter Church over there. So we're grateful to have him. Everybody, please welcome Alex Alvia. How are you, Alex? I'm doing good, man. Excited to be back again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We are excited to have you back again. So... Um, we're talking about worship drumming. I talked about uh, this past week, too, even this morning, of playing to the click of God's heartbeat. You know? And I mean, a lot of times as musicians, are we really playing accordingly to the heartbeat of God? So, can you kind of break that down for us in terms of, you know, what is drums, what, how, for, to you, what does drums mean in worship? Um, you know, we, we, they love to say, you know, drums are the heartbeat, drums are the backbone. Yeah. Um, you know, drums kind of hold, hold it down. Um, we, we can make or break a, a worship, worship session, uh, based on how we play, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, it's important. Um, uh, again, like I, I, I'm a firm believer in structure, but also we know that, you know, cause God's got to order, but you know, at the end of the day, structure submits to spirit. And it's important as a drummer when I'm 
doing a worship service or just having a worship session that I am completely um, just, com I, I, I'm just in tune with what's happening on the spiritual realm, um, you know, and even the physical. Um, there's a lot of things that go on with worship leading. Um, we have to be, you know, worship leading is one of the hardest jobs uh, in ministry as far as like actually doing, doing it um, yeah. because we have to be in the right mind physically to play our instruments proficiently. Um, we need to be in the right mind spiritually to make sure we are following the direction and the cues of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and also, too, we need to be able to sense what's happening in the room. You know, we need, we need to be able to sense that, hey, you know what, the church is really getting into this 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 bridge or this course. Like, let's keep, you know, let's keep doing it. Let's, you know. Um, I like, one of the things that I really love to do is I like to, you know, that I try to do is um, you try to pay attention to the pastors in the front row because they're as a part of the worship experience as my worship leader. Um, God could be telling him, you know, can give, give, could be giving a word to a pastor or somebody in the front row, and I'm just kind of being aware if they're about to come up, I need to back down or back off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, see, see, what I love about you is that you do that. You pay attention. Why is that important? Because, like I said, we can make or break a session, and, and the thing about drums is we're the loudest instrument. And uh, we can, hinder, you know, we're not supposed to be hindrances to someone else's worship. We got to be kind of mindful of that. Hmm. And it's very easy to do that with the drums. It's the easiest to see the two. Uh, that was like that YouTube video of that drummer playing Oceans all crazy, you know. <laughs> like it's really easy to just kind of uh, to, to, to mess with the moment like that. Um, but it's just important to just watch, you know, to watch and listen. You know, make sure that you're not overpowering your team. Um, you know, there's moments where, yeah, it's totally cool to go all out and, you know, do cool stuff. But... Hmm we have to make sure we're following, um, you know, we're serving, we're serving under a worship leader, under yeah. a pastor. So we need to make sure that we're, you know, that we submit to that, that, you know, that leadership a little bit and how we, how we play our instrument or, you know, and how we, so, um, so, going on. so let's talk about that real quick. And by, and by the way, Alicia Kelly on Facebook live says, hello. She says, Alex has a great heart. So, uh, <laughs> hey, <Alicia. laughs> all right. Shout out to Alicia. All right. So, uh, want to know this, what is your approach to, I mean, you mentioned real quick about playing, and I love the fact that you're paying attention to the room. I love the fact that you're paying attention to the other band members. As a drummer, as any musician, it's so easy for us to get locked down into what we're doing that we actually forget where we are. And so tell us, what is your approach to your playing? How do you contribute to the team? Um, so a lot of that is my personal playing style, which is I'm very in the pocket. I'm all about just holding down the beat, you know, keeping it simple, not doing fills every bar. It's just kind of, you know, playing pretty much playing the song. I'm all about, you know, play, play the song. Talk, like there, talk again, about that. Time. Talk about playing through the song because a lot of people just think, oh, you're just playing, you're just playing the song. But there's a difference between playing to the song and playing the song, right? What, what's that difference? Yeah. You're 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 playing a you play a, a vital part. You have to feel that part mm -hmm. again. I can't be going crazier or louder than the vocals. You know, the worship leader has to, the, the, she has to, he or she has to be audible to the church. He, she, mm -hmm. he or she is leading the church in song. And so if I'm playing too loud or if I'm going and I'm, if I'm going in the opposite direction, one, again, I'm messing up, I'm hindering that worship experience or that worship session. And my approach, again, I'm all about just playing the song. Even, you know, the, the way, even the way that I help direct teams with music arrangements. Yeah. It's like, I'm all about play the song like the chart the first couple times. And when you know it, then you can start adding your style and your own flavor because if something happens when you're doing your own thing, you know the song, so you just go back yeah. to playing the song. You know, you're it's, not lost. It's going to come around again. Yeah. So, uh, so, so. Take, so take us through this real quick. Um, I know this is very simple and basic, but when you think about verse, chorus, and bridge as you're playing, each section matters. But, you know, there's some players that actually just don't think about that because they just think, well, I'm just going to play what I'm going to play why is that something not to do? Um, it, dynamics are important in regular and in, in, in non, I guess, non-church music. Mm -hmm. Like when you go see an orchestra or a symphony, um, you know, the music builds to somewhere. Right. If I am, again, if I'm playing something like, if I'm playing Oceans, I'm playing full-on open hats. The entire song, like one, musically, like, that doesn't sound very good just to be straight up. <laughs> But even then, like, you, where, are you, where are you building to? You know what I mean? Like, music has, is, is so powerful spiritually, and we can use it to build, you know. Not, not that we can force moments, but we can help, you know, be a part of these really cool, like, spontaneous moments that the Holy Spirit have to be, you know, puts together. And, like, dynamics play a huge part in that, you know, and taking the church somewhere. 
because otherwise you're just kind of like it's very it's just flat and mm-hmm. you know there's not it's just people can sense that even people that aren't super musical minded can sense that and um, it's just important to again you know there's part when when you hit a chorus I'm not going to play the chorus the same as the verse I mean as long as the song calls for that first of all again I'm all about you know what the song calls for and that's a big part of my playing again I'm not going to go crazy and just you know edge of the ride the whole thing but there are times like you know a lot of yeah. you know certain certain uh, worship slower worship songs like that big chorus or that big you know the big Bethel build at the end like yeah, you know, you're going to go all crazy on, on the edge of the ride and stuff. But, mm-hmm. again, it's just we, we need to play a part in the band. Like, we're not we're, we're not the show. Like, it's yeah. not about us. Yeah. You know? Like the one, uh, like the other YouTube drummer that was in the wrong band, the 50s guy with the big <laughs> yeah. hair and the fluffy stuff around the drums, you know, the pink fluff stuff. Yeah. Um, so, question. You're talking um, a lot of great stuff that we need to be doing as a team but there are a lot of teams out there that may not have a drummer. In fact, they may not even have drums. And believe it or not, I mean, you know, you guys watching, you may have a great band, you may have great drummers, or you may be thinking, hey, that's not me, I need one. So, Alex, what's your encouragement to churches that are either A, without a drummer, or B, this is a hot topic too, how to introduce drums within their church? Um, you know, I'm, I'm again... Playing what calls for. Sometimes you don't need drums. Like, it's not... I, I, I kind of mentioned it the other day when we were chatting about, like, one of my favorite things is not playing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love being able I love being able to back off and let just the vocals and the pads do anything. Like, it's just there's something cool about that, you know? I feel like there's a lot of power in not in holding back, not playing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and if, if... A lot of it has to do with what is, what is you know, your facilities like? You know, what is, it, what is your, your, your building or your, even your, your style of your church? Like, what does it call for? Because that plays a part in you know, into uh, the people serving on your team, the songs you're playing. Um, you know, you, your the worship team should be the voice of the community, of your, of your church community. You know, if, if your church is more diverse, your music's going to reflect that. You know, if your church is more geared to a certain uh, group of people, demographic people, your your music will, uh, you know, it'll kind of just, it'll, it'll show that. Um, you know, if, if you, you know, are at a church and you're wanting to incorporate drums, you know, um, again, take take a look at you know what are your facilities like? What's your capabilities? You know, is it is it vital? Um, as much as I would love every church to have drums, you know what I mean. We, again, mm-hmm. we have to you know what what is what does it call for? What does the music call for? Um, I would recommend to start off if you know a small church is you know a cone drum, something super simple to hold on the beat. You know, it's 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 they're inexpensive. They sound really good. They have a lot of color to them. Um, you can use them for all styles of music. Um, you know, if you're if you're a bigger church and you're trying to, you know, I mean, yeah, it's incorporated drum set. Uh, when I first started going to Mosaic Pomona, um, they did mostly acoustic style kits uh, sets with, you know, a cajon drum and stuff, and that was cool. Mm-hmm. But my thing is a drum kit, and so it's kind of cool to be able to get them to kind of integrate that and like, you know, it's it's all baby steps, you no know. Doubt. And again, no doubt. ultimately, what is, you know, it comes down to this. Um, the worship team, we're kind of like are we we were like we first were right, we report straight to the pastor in a sense. We we are a team with the pastor. 100. If we don't do our job correctly, right, it makes it a lot harder for the pastor to do his job on a Sunday 100%. morning or a Saturday morning. Hundred percent, right with you. And so, when it comes to things like that, we need to make sure that our worship team and our worship aligns with the vision of the pastor. Absolutely, you know, because he's 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 been given you know charge of shepherding the church and the community. And so, I think even when it comes to making decisions like, hey, you know, should we incorporate this new instrument or incorporate drums? You know, I, w- I would recommend that to, to somebody that has that question is talk to your pastor, see if that's something that, you know, God has put in his heart, you know, and maybe if not now, maybe there's opportunity to do that in the future. All right. So um, we got a, we got a few questions. Uh, Mercedes um, Galavez Passis. I uh, hope I pronounced that correctly. Sorry if I messed it up. She says uh, for a small room in a small church, like 50 people, what would your setup be? I would do, I mean, again, basic cajon drum. You just see yeah. one microphone on it. And, again, you have a low end on it. You have a high end, you know, a slap on the top for that snare sound. If you want to get a little more, um, I guess, uh, what's the word I can use? Elaborate with it. <laughs> um, I have seen, I saw this really cool setup that had a, uh, had a drummer sits on the cajon box. He had a remote kick cable, a kick, kick drum pedal, or a kick drum pedal that's, that's backwards. That's fantastic. That, and then he had a little, a small piccolo snare drum, and then a splash cymbal, and a small pair of hats. You know, so it's like a mini cone drum set. It sounded really That's cool. Awesome. It had, had a nice, 
you know, and it, for a drum, a drum set drummer, it was like, yeah, you have that acoustic vibe, but he gets your drummer gets to kind of I mean, play. Yeah, that's you like know? that's like a suitcase drum kit, right? You know, <laughs> you just take that wherever you go, man. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, or even, or, or or I mean, if you have the budget for it, you know, electric drums are perfect. Uh, my church, actually, here in Thailand, we um, we have, we're good size, but we have because of the facilities and because we don't have a permanent facility, we have a uh, Roland TD TD thirties, which are Really awesome and sound right. amazing and play like real kids. So All right. you know, there's there's a lot of ways that you can kind of incorporate that. But cost efficient wise, it'd probably just be go with the cone drip. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, she says awesome. Thank you for that. And um, some others too. Like uh, we have those that are struggling with electronic kits. You have drummers that don't want to play them. I mean, I we totally get that. I I mean, I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone. I don't think any musician, especially drummer, loves electronic drums, but uh, we have some here that are saying that they're having trouble with that. Be you know, so what do you say to drummers that are forced to use an electric kit because that's all the church has? What do you What do you say to that? Um, first of all, uh, um, a lot of this is a heart issue. Is that is wow. that one thing going to keep you from from serving your church, Love you it. know, or using your gifts for for, for the kingdom? Like hmm. if that if that one thing is 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 issue. And again, I'm a drummer. I'm all about comfortability. Um, I've been playing on acoustic kits most of my life, and you know, it, it is an adjustment to go on an electronic kit. And I understand, totally, but again, like, totally. where, where's your heart at in serving? You know what I mean? That's it's a sacrifice. It's small. It's a small sacrifice. You know, it is a sacrifice. But again, uh, what should matter more is is your heart for serving than the type of equipment you're on. Cool, cool. Um, because like, I've uh, I've gotten the chance to tour around the world the last few years, and we played in a lot of third world countries. And I didn't know what I was going to get when I got there, you know? Yeah, luckily I had my snare drum, but it's like <laughs> maybe I had a pearl, maybe I had some kind of kit that I've never heard heard of before in my life, but, you know, it didn't matter. We were there to serve, you know? Yeah, cool. All right, so tell us real quick also, you've you toured, uh, a couple of questions, uh, you toured with Crustafari. Tell us yes. a, Tell us about your relationship with those guys. Um, that was amazing. Um it, it actually started when I was a little kid. Um, I remember the day my dad came home with a cassette tape of their first record and um, just tripping out about this reggae style of music because I only heard like a Bob Marley song. So, And then you fast forward to 10 years ago when I actually auditioned for them the first time and I didn't get it. And uh, I exchanged some emails with the singer and got some really sound advice that actually uh, improved my worship drumming. Wow. You know, like playing with a click. That was one of his things. He was like, hey, if you play with the click every day, if you sleep, go to sleep, listen to one, like, you'll be the best drummer that I know. And I just kind of, I didn't intentionally incorporate that, but I started to use that, started to use backing tracks in church and stuff. And uh, finally, two years ago, I, uh, the week before I come to Thailand for the first time, uh, I get a, a message from him on Facebook, hey, man, like, would you like to audition? Give us a call. And so we talked and I auditioned. Came, went, the night before I flew to Thailand, I go to Thailand. Halfway through, I get a Skype call and I get in the band. And so... Uh, I got I had the the, the privilege to tour with them for two years wow. and um, it was amazing. We did we did five continents in a year and a half. Wow! Yeah, you know, I, I hadn't gone to any other country uh, up and up up you know before like That's living in America. Else. They lived living in America, and so yeah. I mean it was really cool to go from like going to Papua New Guinea, you know, Last Frontier Missions, and uh, playing for for you know people that have never heard gospel music before. Right. To like go to Brazil and headlining a concert for 100,000 people and hearing 100,000 people singing Revelation song in Portuguese, you know. Um, so that was, it was just such this amazing just experiences, yeah. you know. And I'm so glad that I got to do that. Like I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned a lot about missions because of their heart for missions and evangelism. And, um, you know, and then last year, God kind of just spoke to me and said, hey, you know, uh, you, you've gotten to do this now. I, you know, I want you to do this. And so he called me to move out to Thailand. And so I'm serving yeah. the local church here. That's awesome. And I'm also doing anti trafficking work on here as well. Wow. Uh, so tie this in. Uh, tell us about the story of the flag that's behind you. Yeah. So uh, reggae music is my favorite style of music. Um, it, it, it played a big part in me uh, really becoming real about my relationship with Jesus. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in church, you know, and. Again, it comes to the point where you can't live off piggyback off your family members' uh, relationships with God. You got to have your own, and uh, you know God really revealed Himself through listening to reggae music to me. He really, really revealed Himself to me through listening to reggae music. And uh, so this flag behind me, you, you probably see it concerts and stuff, but there's actually a deeper meaning there. So this flag was one of the old flags of the country of Ethiopia. It was a Christian kingdom. Uh, their emperor was a, was was a Christian man, and um, 
always talked about Jesus, about following Jesus. He's always talking about being a disciple. And it's really cool because the flag is the line of Judah, like one, yeah. of the most amazing, one of the most awesome symbols in the Bible of Jesus. Right. And uh, the others have really cool rep- meanings. So like green means hope. Uh, the yellow stands for the church, for peace and for love, and red, red means faith. And, um, you know, I have this flag everywhere I go, and I've taken this flag everywhere I've gone to the road, and it just, I have it up on my wall, and it's just a reminder when I wake up of, you know, who, who stands for me and who I serve, and, you know. Hmm. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for that. I mean, that you have such a long history of, uh, of mission work instead of just, you know, sitting behind the drums. I mean, you're actually out doing something. What do you encourage other drummers that feel like maybe, well, I just sit here, I'm just a drummer, or I'm just a bass player in the band, uh, don't you think there's something more that each of them actually had that God's given? Uh, share with us. What, what's your thought on that? Yeah, you, there's, again, there's such a responsibility in being able, you know, yeah, you have a worship leader that is in the front of the band singing the song, but if you're on the stage, you're worship leading. It doesn't matter if you're playing drums, it doesn't matter if you're playing triangle, if you're playing guitar, or even if you're the sound man in the back. Like, you are playing a vital role and, and, and helping people connect to God on a musical level, mm. you know, and, and, as, and, 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 and as a group, as a congregation, you know, that's, that's heavy, that's, that's mm-hmm. heavy stuff there. And, you know, you're not just a drummer, you're not just a, a, somebody standing on stage, like you have been given this awesome responsibility to lead others into the presence of God. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, yeah. um, it's, it's really important to remember that, like, it's it's just, it's cool. Like one of the things I always pray on Sundays before a church is like, God, thank you that we get to make noise. Like to one to honor, like you give us get exactly to, to, to make noise, and we get to you know serve God, and then we get to serve our church and serve people. You know, it's exactly it's just really cool. Exactly, I love that man. Uh, by the way, um, Asara Mulichu, uh, who you know says many of our musicians, he's he's loving the flag. He says thank you for choosing my country's flag for your background. <laughs> He says, many of our musicians plus singers don't give space to connecting to God before they do start playing, standing in front of a microphone. Important to emphasize that the more we connect prior, the more we can worship while playing singing. And that yeah. lets the spirit to flow and eases the worship for players. It's a great yeah. word. Um, Asrat, thanks so much for that. Go ahead. Um, I, I mentioned this yesterday, too. You know, one of the things that I really stress in... Uh, Again, I apologize that I kind of don't apologize if this comes out harsh, but you know, Sunday, if you're if you're on the worship team, Sunday should not be the day Say it. that you decide to worship. Yes. Um, worship is uh, is you know, we preach it, we hear it, we see it on bumper stickers and t-shirts. Worship is a lifestyle. It's something that we do every day with that from the most minuscule minuscule actions, you know, right. of like filling out a calendar, like that how we how we right. approach that. Right. You know, is, is our level of thankfulness to God for being alive, and, and it's Absolutely. an act of worship, and we do that throughout the week, you know, but when it comes to Sunday or whenever your church's service is like, we have a job to do, we have to lead others in, and if I decide that's the day I'm going to get mine, like, that's, one, that's selfish, and two, that's just not a great attitude to have, because, again, we have a job to do, and we have to make sure that we are focused right. on that job, that, that task that we have. Awesome. Alex, uh Man, this guy is just loaded. You're going to see a lot more of him. Hey, if you're watching this program right now by Facebook Live and Periscope, we invite you to like us on Facebook, Worship Team Training, and also go to worshipteamtraining.com. Follow us on Periscope and also Twitter because you're going to get more shows like this every week, every Tuesday. And then when you become a member of our university program at Worship Team Training, you get to see our Thursday shows every week plus our monthly webinars. Don't forget we got Jenny Owens coming up this week. Friday at 12 p.m. Central. So a lot of your friends are watching. So we thank you guys for coming in. Uh, but most of all, Alex, we thank you, dude, for being here today, sharing your heart, bringing the real, talking about the struggle, talking about the resolution. Thank you for this. Thank you for having me, man. It's a privilege to be able to share this stuff. Awesome, man. It's a privilege. It's an honor having you, bro. And we're going to have Alex back for a webinar next year. Also, we talked about putting his drumming on our university site. So we're gonna have your video drumming clips. We're gonna have more articles and some teaching spots by you. So if you become a member at WTTU.co, you will see more of Alex and the content for drummers, for keyboard players, guitar players, you got it. Uh, So we thank you guys for coming in today. And uh, we look forward to having you later this week, tomorrow at 11 a.m. We have Garrett Goodwin 
who is a drummer for Carrie Underwood. He's going to be coming up. So you got to become a member at WTTU.co to check that out and get that video. Also today for songwriters, if you're a songwriter out there, we got you covered. We have John Chisholm and Susan Fontaine Godwin. They're going to be talking about how to get your songs published. So if you love that, you like that, you definitely want to be liking our page and go to WTTU.co. And don't forget Jenny Owens. You can win a free download album, her new release, this coming Friday at 12 p.m. Central. Guys, this is just the, uh, the tip of the iceberg. We have a lot more coming, and it's not just by the end of this year. We have a lot launching off for 2018 that we're shh, being a little bit of secret about. But great guys like Alex coming in, Garrett coming in, but we got new programs that are going to be started geared towards you, four worship leaders, four worship teams, worshiping drummers and singers and leaders. You don't want to miss it. So be sure that you get your membership today. And check us back out, wttu.co. All right, I'm going to just cut that right now because I don't want to keep hammering the, the, the uh, <laughs> wttu.co thing. Because every time I say wttu.co, you know, there it is. But anyway, I'm just playing with you guys. Hey, thanks so much. He's, he's great. We're going to have Garrett come back. Um, Garrett comes back on Thursday. But Alex, uh, we love you. Thank you so much again for sharing us uh, with your time today, bro. Love it. Thanks again for having me, man. It was a privilege to be here. All right, man. So stay right there. You got it, man. Stay right there, Alex. And guys, we'll see you hopefully on WTTU.co when you get your membership. And then also be sure to check us out with Jenny Owens this coming Friday, 12 p.m. And sign up. We're going to have a drawing on the show that day that you can get a free album download. So don't miss it. 12 p.m. right here on Facebook, Worship Team Training and also Periscope. That's why you want to like us. So like Worship Team Training on Facebook or Periscope, follow us, and then you'll get everything there. Guys, thanks so much for coming in. We love you, and we'll see you guys back very, very soon. Bye.